the approval of, um, let's introduce ourselves, I suppose, too, since we're on the recording. Uh, Chairperson Mayor Zach Brewink. Uh, Alderperson Thad Kubishat. Joe Terry, Secretary. Lee Tong, Commission Member. Adam Tegan, Community Development Director. Thank you all for being here. Lee's also in the audience, Lee, if you want to introduce yourself for the record. Uh, Lee Graf, Alderman District 2. Item number one is approval of the report from the May 7th Planning Commission meeting. Commissioners, what are your wishes regarding that item? Motion to approve. A motion by Tao, is there a second? Second. Go ahead. Second by Kubishak. Any discussion or additions or corrections to the report? Hearing none, moving to a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Item two, <coughs> maps or plats received. Adam, is there anything that came None in were after? received. No. All right. Item three then, the review and approval of a resolution <coughs> recommending to the City Council an amendment to the City's comprehensive plan. All right, so uh, last month, if you recall, uh, the consultants had presented the most recent draft of the comprehensive plan, dated May 1, so that's the document here on the board and then what was also in your packets. Uh, there was a little bit of discussion <coughs> on it at that meeting, uh, but the next logical <coughs> step on this is moving it forward to the council for their consideration. Uh, in order to do that, a resolution must be passed by the Planning Commission recommending the adoption of the amendment. <coughs> and then if that does pass, then a uh, class one notice, a minimum of 30 days prior to the council meeting, will be put in the paper. Uh, and then we have to notify all adjoining communities within a thousand feet of our boundaries of the comprehensive plan amendment change. So that would be done as well. Uh, and I believe we have to notify any military bases within a certain distance, but I don't believe any fall into that as well. So there's a lot of procedures that would then happen. Uh, and then the expectation is that this would go to the July uh, council meeting for their review and consideration in a formal public hearing. When it comes down to the comprehensive plan, they are the public hearing body, they being the city council versus the planning commission. The planning commission is the review and the recommendation on it, but the actual public hearing takes place at the council. So that's what that class one notice and all those other notices would be for. Um, so uh, before, I guess, I would recommend it, before you make any motions on the resolution, just you've had almost a month to review the actual uh, draft map. So if there are any changes or tweaks to that, uh, I brought along a marker so we can mark up the hard copy or I can try and take notes on uh, the mono pad, but uh, just really looking for input if there were any uh, concerns or changes on that map. And I also have a question beyond the map for some of the, uh, I know you're not recommending any subs uh, really too, too many substantive changes to the goals and objectives section of the comp plan. Uh -huh. What, um, where in the process are we able to still make those, or do we need to make those changes Is it at this meeting to have those changes incorporated in there? If the commission wishes to make changes, now would be appropriate. Uh, if it, up until obviously the public hearing changes and recommendations can be made. So okay. The council can adopt any recommended changes. At I just have some their draft as well. changes that are really just scratched on here, and I think I may want to still flush them out in long form yep. for the rest of the commission's benefits so we don't just have to add them now in haste or anything. Okay, so we've got some time then to yep. get those some yep. Okay. Since it's a public hearing, obviously any commentary can be received up until the, Thank you. the public hearing. Excellent. So the the request or the need to do today is um, to entertain any potential changes to the proposed future land use map uh, as it's proposed or presented. Right. Yep. The, I guess the one that I would call out specifically, just based on the um, most recent zoning, <coughs> is the, the seven acres I believe that was owned by the county. I have a hard time telling what color that is, but I think for some reason it's shown as Mobile Home Park, mm -hmm. which I would not recommend, <laughs> I guess. So um, I don't think we were going to do anything in Mobile Home Park. Or anything. Right. Uh, well, only, I think, the, the, the two large <coughs> existing ones, the small ones, were shown as consistent with the adjoining properties. Mm -hmm. um, so that the corner, I, I guess, depending what the commission feels is appropriate for. If you can see my marker, it's kind of small, but this brownish area and the orange up in here. Uh, if currently it's shown as mixed residential, which would be anything from single family up to, I believe, around eight unit buildings could be constructed in there. And again, this is the plan land use, not changing the actual zoning of the property. The property would stay rural residential on the proposed zoning map. Uh, but depending on what the commission feels is appropriate in the long term, I would probably change that orangish piece that's currently shown as a mobile home to reflect what the major 
majority of the rest of that area would be developed as, whether that's industrial, as the properties to the south and west are shown, or if it's mixed residential, as is shown, or I'm sorry, multifamily residential. And that's what I would, I would be, I would have no problem with it if it was changed to what's contiguous with it, and whether it is industrial or whether it is a mixed residential. The one comment I'd have is I'm having a tough time distinguishing between mobile home park and multifamily. I'd suggest the, <coughs> the planner, the guys, in the change a different color. Just yeah. do a whole different color because if I look at it, I'm seeing mobile home park, and then I'm looking over at Woodlands. I think it's Woodlands Business Park. No, that's not Woodlands. That's um, uh, upper right corner, not upper right corner, but the near right corner that's contiguous okay. mid state. Yeah, I that's guess that the be. multifamily residential yeah. area up there. Okay. There's the senior housing development. There's the <coughs> Swiderski. I just don't want to get confused for mobile yeah. home park up there either. To me, I can see it go either way. So we can just have them maybe update that. So right a away. new color for mobile home park. What color would be suggested? Cool. Pink. Pink. Well, pink is a color. Yeah. yeah. Something that's in that's a that's yellow, different. right? Yeah. Wish orange range, but yeah, something more distinctive. Okay. Pink, pink or cool. salmon or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just to distinguish yep. it. I don't want anybody to look at this and think we're proposing mobile home parks in these areas right. as a future land use. Not that we're changing these only anyway with it, but right, yeah. that'd be my is, first comment. Okay. Your, your map backed up. Oh no, what did I touch? What'd you do, Joe? Uh, it's not my fault. The other question I have is um, a lot of that that was commercial uh, when West Grand was reconstructed, when they pulled a lot of that in to change it to commercial, I'm wondering does it make sense to change some of that to mixed use in the future? And maybe it doesn't make so much sense. I'm thinking the property around um, Renaissance Learnings, now the tenant there on West Grand and 25th Avenue, the former Cranberries um, property. I mean, some of that transitional area, I could see it almost being a mixed use versus a strictly commercial. Unless you're thinking the commercial still allows us to achieve residential or multifamily or any flavor thereof in the future. What is your thought? Um, I mean, commercial is fairly broad. Obviously, it's not calling for the mixed use is the one that calls for a, obviously a mixture of uses, but whether it be residential or commercial. Okay. So if you're thinking that there would be more of a transition zone as you proceed farther west, that would make sense to change that to that greenish color, teal, aqua. Whatever that is. Mixed you, I see. Yeah, it's just a matter of where you would want that transition to start. Is it where the lots start getting larger so that you can maybe incorporate some larger developments? Um, so that would be basically where you're talking Renaissance Learning, the former bowling alley, uh, where Wheelers is across the street, and then kind of going west where Quick Trip and some of those are. You start getting into parcels that are two, three, four acres so that a mixed use development probably makes more sense versus. If you go east on West Grand there, then you're talking a lot of those small residential lots that are 10,000, 15,000 square feet. They're really hard to do a mixed-use development, but they can do a small commercial or a small retail or something like that relatively easily. What is the definition or your definition of mixed-use, I guess? Yeah, well, I would refer to what our plan calls for. It. Then it's not my definition. Sure. What, your, what is the plan's right. definition? Yep. Uh, so it's complementary mix of residential and commercial land uses. Over time, most of the land uses will be commercial in nature. This area may also include lands designated for environmental protection and compatible civic uses.
other areas of concerns, commissioners, that you may want to make an edit to? Um, I'm just looking at the map. Uh, I think it says multifamily residential by, by Bono Avenue, so it's on the northwest side. In the same section, that's a multifamily residence. You're talking... That whole block. This, you know, well, that's, where the, that's where the, um, the railroad has their yard and that kind of stuff. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if multifamily fits into that or if that shouldn't be resident or uh, industrial. And you're talking most of the block, right? Because mm -hmm. all the way north to the dog park, that's all considered multifamily. Right, yeah, the dog park on here is shown as mixed stuff. use. Mixed stuff. use. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, way up there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <coughs> then yes. So then it's all industrial, industrial in between there, though. It's only showing, and I was wondering if it, again, the brown and orange here, if it's actually multifamily residential or if it's mixed residential, leading your question. I almost, and I could be. I think that's one. mixed. Seeing the colors I, wrong. Yeah, yeah I think that's it mixed residential. So it's not showing as multi. No. no. Multi-family is the orange. color would be orange. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not that more orangey color. That's over by Mid State. Mm -hmm. I think. Yep. So what you're saying, Lee, is maybe move that industrial <coughs> farther south so that it lines up. So it's not. So that one large parcel there looks Let's like. See if I can zoom in here without messing up. Everything. Yeah, the one that borders the switching yard in particular. So you're talking that, this right area there. right here. So here's my cursor again. Yeah. But so right in here. Right. Yeah. So maybe down to this. <coughs> well, I'm just I'm just wondering because that's so low in there. There's a lot of wetlands. Right. In mm -hmm. that area I don't in particular. Know what you could ever mm -hmm. do with that? A lot of that block in particular. Mm -hmm. That our current DNR regs are pretty liberal about allowing <laughs> a lot of wetland trading and things. But you're right; it would require some cash and right. Mm -hmm. So more likely, likely, or is industrial more likely? I mean, your West Side Industrial Park is ninety-five percent built out. Mm -hmm. So, if you do want to ever expand that, is that a logical place to expand it to? Yeah, I think the at least that top parcel there would that be Industrial Street? Is that the furthest north street? That tease there, yeah. or no? But uh, Engel. That's um, yeah. Landfills on Engel, right? Yeah. yeah, that's uh, industrial yeah. is the one that my cursor is basically yeah. sitting on. Jefferson is north of that, and then Angle is north of that. Yeah, Jefferson here, industrial here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then uh, Angle's the top one. Yeah, and then Angle up here. Um, what I'm referring to is converting <coughs> that first parcel off of Angle mm -hmm. to industrial. Okay. So if we convert to here, so you're saying this parcel? Yeah. That. The top. Change that one to industrial for right. sure. Right. Okay. I think there's a good point to be made that much of that, at least on the front, is just connected to the switching room. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not sure when it gets back down in there, I mean, just a little bit further south <coughs> of that, if that was also encapsulated on the west side, well, the south side of the tracks there. You know, I'm not exactly sure by this map how that all breaks down. Mm -hmm. I could bring up aerial photos if that would be helpful so that we can kind of see what's Just changed is that that parcel is this parcel yeah. to industrial. So the question is, these parcels is that what you're asking about? Right, right. And I, I don't know what that looks like. What the wetlands? As far as wetlands, or yeah, we can turn that on right here. Looks like there might be a stream that runs through the right. Creek. Yeah, I think that meanders through there. So yeah, there's a mm -hmm. fair amount of wetlands there. Jeez. So again, we were talking about. But it hasn't been delineated, right? 
Yeah, this is from the inventory that was done, what, 80s, I think it was? Yeah. So whether or not you would walk <laughs> this, out there This and actually find it. isn't the most modern map either. And the reason for that is the DNR won't let you capture their data anymore. Oh. So you, you, if you really want to get the most current stuff, you have to look at their map. Oh, gotcha. Um, but for a while, they let other GIS users capture their data. Hence, this is what we've got on our city map. Right. Okay. I feel comfortable with the rest of that. I mean, I think obviously there has to be a lot more exploration if any development were to occur there, and it's it's not bordered so much by industrial. Yeah, the further stuff is switching here, yeah. south as, with industrial as it is the first person. How much is a wetland credit on the open market right now? I don't even know. Um, I haven't heard anybody recently doing anything mm -hmm. really with it. Rams and I think was the one looking on West Grand by the storage units at one point. Yeah. I have no idea. But he ended up just designing around it. Right. And another one, if you see a pressure one way or the other, again, you can go back and tweak this. <coughs> so let's say industrial is beginning to pop there. The wetlands aren't an issue. Then, and if you want a lot more industrial land, you can discuss it. Well, and realistically, this is more of a, a, a roadmap, a guideline. You know, it isn't anything that's specifically tying it to the zoning map, aside from the fact that yep. we're it, it shouldn't be in contradiction to the zoning map. Yeah, and I mean, I've read, it depends what attorneys you talk to, but some attorneys have said even if it's in the general area, so that it's not necessarily, a comprehensive plan is not supposed to be necessarily parcel specific. So if they wanted to develop, it's a little hazy where those exact boundaries are. It's still trying to show you that this general area is industrial, this general area is residential, <coughs> but if that parcel happens to be shown residential right next to the industrial, it's not like, you're probably not going to lose in a court case if the city were to rezone it. So, yeah, it is meant to be a guiding policy document versus like the zoning map, which is specific. Policies. My last point would be we incorporate a lot of Town of Grand Rapids uh -huh. um, areas for future growth. We didn't do anything to the west in the town of Seneca, and I'm wondering if there's any reason for us just to apply some color to that area. I would suspect it'd be residential, and you could just have it as a broad residential. Yeah, you're, so you're saying one here because this yeah. is the existing city boundary, so whether or not you want to put like <coughs> I mean, I could see like wide George Road or and some of that area starting continue to get some activity. I mean, it could even be single family for that matter. Yeah. I mean, Definitely, it's, it's a plan, so obviously, you're not going to encroach south into Port Edwards and yeah. here and here, but yes, that could certainly be shown. You could conceivably do the same on the north too if you wanted to because that's the town of. Or town of Seneca. Seagull. Seagull. Right. Town of Rudolph is um, part right. of it, and then the left side is Seagull. Okay. Or the yellow area would be Seagull. Probably Rudolph. Commissioners, what do you think about at least the Seneca portion? If you is town of Seneca actually borders Seneca Road down here? Is that correct? That's correct. So we well, could conceivably use yeah. the town of Seneca or the Seneca Road as the southernmost boundary right. for. Yep. Something. I mean, yeah, I call, I I'm just going to call it rural, rural residential. residential. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody have any opposition to? So I'm saying that's what we're showing in the yeah. Grand Rapids yeah. growth area. Yeah. 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 And then just kind of put it out for any particular. I think even just that the quarter yeah. section. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. so we're looking at this all the way up to the highway. Yeah. Sure. Right. I think that's mostly. I don't know what's already commercial in the city. A lot of that's residential. And maybe, do, would you want to th show us some sort of corridor along there as something else, or no? I don't think as much of that's buildable. Okay, so we'll just do the whole thing rural residential for now, just to show it as a future commercial right. growth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can get that change. Anybody else have anything you'd like to offer up at this stage? I know we had talked about the Baker Street corridor, specifically with the consultant. Did he capture that correctly? So we had mixed use basically <coughs> from 8th Street down towards the roundabout, 
which only in the beginning to transition to mixed res or mixed use. So that would allow some commercial, and then between Eighth Street and I believe it's Sixteenth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Shown as mixed residential, so it wouldn't call specifically for commercial growth along Baker Street. I think that's what we had discussed, but I did, I just re specifically remember us talking about that and Pepper being the other one. So that's why there's that extension of mixed use on Pepper mm -hmm. as well. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I think they captured it. It looks good to me from what I remember our discussion being. Pepper, right? Yep. And is that, that's orange, right? Those are orange. Yeah, this right? is Renaissance. Okay. Whatever Renaissance living. Okay. So that's, I think, why that's shown okay. as residential. <coughs> and this little blurb in the middle, I think, is a residential use currently as well. So okay. I think that's why those are both shown on Pepper. And it goes to ODC. Any further comments on the land use map component of all of that? So I have three changes that I will give to the consultant. One is just basically throwing a rural residential on the west. Where it was mobile home park incorrectly, that would get changed to mixed <coughs> residential to be consistent with the surrounding properties. And then that north part of the mixed residential <coughs> would transition to industrial. Did we want to do mixed use on West Grand? Oh, yeah. Especially the south side from, would that be 17th yeah. to the west? 17th would be here. Yeah. So basically, just west of the fire station. Mm -hmm. Right. South side only. Well, there, there's residential on both sides, isn't there? Mm -hmm. In spots. Mm -hmm. A little less so on the north because you have the dealerships. Yeah, and, the, and the, <coughs> north, the north side is getting, you know, there's enough infill with commercial there that I'm not sure that mixed yeah. use would still be appropriate on the north side of the corner. Mm -hmm. But on the south side, I agree. I think there's potentially some <coughs> uh, um, hesitation to improve some of those properties because of the long-term plans of the city. I'm just speculating, of course, but, um, you know, where mixed use would allow those people some comfort knowing that, okay, if I want to invest in improving this house, it can stay that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the question is whether or not the council would be comfortable <coughs> potentially down-zoning those districts because they're currently zoned B2, so they would have to be down-zoned to mm -hmm. something that would allow a residential use. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe that's not. Well, would you need to do that immediately, though? No, not immediately. No, it can be 10 years down the road. Right. Oh, you're saying when the time comes <coughs> to down zone it right. from commercial to gotcha. Because yeah. it would remain commercial, which is what this is right. showing on the project came along. Right. Hope they would so see I'm going to attempt to skip. So if I'm understanding, we're saying. Basically, all the commercials south of West Grand, yep. west of 17th, would be mixed use. So, basically, this chunk. Correct. I mean, that makes sense to me. I don't know what that of those things. If everyone can see that. Okay. All right. That takes care of the land use map. Um, we'll go to the resolution. Nothing fancy. It's uh, pretty basically just saying that the commission or the council can make changes. The council adopted the public participation plan. If you remember, we did that very early on in this process, which basically goes through that we'll hold public hearings at, and all the notices. Um, and basically, the planning commission has developed an update to this map, which is part of Chapter 7, and then the text that it was also included to Chapter 7. And that you are recommending that the council approve those changes. So that's what basically what the resolution says. So if you're okay with that and want to proceed with a public hearing at the council in July, I would recommend you uh, approve.
approve the resolution as presented. One quick thing, Adam, um, and I don't think that this is controversial or whatever, but looking at where the foundry potentially was or is, the print is still there, mm -hmm. um, is that commercial now? It is. It's shown on commercial here. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the Solaris building, kind of their service building, the foundry, and then the multifamily senior residential are those three chunks of commercial right there. Okay. I guess maybe if we're talking about mixed use with all the other different areas that we looked at, maybe putting mixed use for that <coughs> because, I don't know, um, adjacent to it is single family residential and then multifamily residential is right next to it, and then you got Obviously, the YMCA and Boys and Girls Club come in there. Um, I don't know. So, you changing know, it to what? Did you a say mixed to, use to, 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 mix to it kind of uh, more, make it more broad potential um, of, of activity, not just limiting it to commercial. Because it currently, right now, I would imagine it's industrial, right? Foundry? Know that it is. Is this one? I don't think we have the zoning. Oh, we do yeah, have the yeah. zoning layer on this one. Let's look. I don't, I don't want. I don't think it is zoned industrial. But I cannot read it. So it might be B two. Residential. More than residential. I think it's multifamily actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in light of that, mm -hmm. it might make sense to reflect it as mixed use. Then. I mean, I think that's the most likely. Near-term replacement for the product, as we put it in front of developers, is multifamily or right. some form of housing. Um, so I'd, I'd support a mixed use. Anybody else have any thoughts? To the contrary. And aside from coming off of what is that Hale Street there, um, I doubt that it, if we tried to market it as commercial, I doubt that um, the state would allow a driveway off yeah. of the expressway. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't. You'd have to cut it through that small C right. triangle mm -hmm. property, which. Even that would be tight to probably too close to the intersection, probably for a driveway. I'm just thinking, probably. Yeah. yeah. So we would change this multifamily to mixed use, this foundry site to mixed use, and this to mixed use? Because those are the three shown as commercial currently. I suppose they're kind of contiguous yeah. there. Um, or you could, I guess, put this as residential since it's new and modern residential and isn't likely to be re redeveloped. Surely not in the next 20 years. So maybe we can change that to be residential. Residential, and then we would change that to mixed news. Those to mixed news. Does Solaris have any plans of, of moving more there in? I have no idea. But I would think as their technology continues to change and morph, that's always a possibility. But they vacated from here their call center, so I think they may have moved. They had some storage over at Johnson Hills, so I'm wondering if they used some excess storage there too. I mean, they kind of receded their footprint already, so I'm wondering maybe if they, they're already using more capacity. I haven't heard anything to be able to I have not heard anything. I mean, the thing is, I think that's all their fleet vehicles are in their um, parts. Yeah, or service. Their, uh, right. Service shop, yeah. 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 So they'd have to. That's probably. by the foundry. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Anything else on the resolution then? <coughs> Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion to approve as presented. Second that. Um, I'll, I'll make that motion. Oh, Lee wants oh to I thought you I, wanted I, to make I, that I motion. Heard you. I'll just entertain a motion. Oh, Lee, okay. I'll give you the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Wesley. Any further discussion? Seeing hearing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. So then, Adam, as a refresher, July public hearing at the council level. Yeah. So that will be the third Tuesday of July. <coughs> and then just a reminder that at the council, an hour before the council meeting in June, which would be at 5 o'clock on June 17th, is sticking in my head. Um, that will be the uh, public hearing on the zoning code and zoning map. So that'll be a joint meeting of the council and the commission. So please do your best to be there. And that's Tuesday? Yep. The 19th? Not next Tuesday. Two Tuesdays yeah, from right, today. Right. Yeah. Third tomorrow. Don't have my calendar. 
Yeah. yeah. I think it's what is today? Today's the fourth, so fifth. Yeah. Yeah. It would be the twelfth, nineteenth. Yeah. And that's five o'clock. Five o'clock. Yep. And that'll be. I don't know. If, I think we'll try it here, and if it gets too big, we'll end up moving to the council chambers. I'm sure. All right. So if you can, I will obviously send out a meeting notice to you to remind you of that. But get it on your calendars now and if there are other since we are going through the motions to change or adopt the chapter 7 land use chapter um, trying to comp plan I think it makes sense for commissioners to submit or anybody for that matter the public if they wish somebody had called me on a few changes and it gave me pause to think well maybe there is a reason to update some of these things since we're probably not going to update our comp plan for a number of years so um, just to be a bit more encompassing I'm thinking more so on the goals objectives and policies I mean there's yeah, they incorporated the uh, some of the information from the housing study, yeah. um, so that that's updated, so that our projections are more modernized as part of this chapter seven, some employment, and then the other major change was on the definitions of the land use categories, since these are slightly different than the old ones. But yes. Okay. Any and all comments? Well, all right. I better take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Talizer, second. Second by Kubashek, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Stand adjourned.